building the rear part of the X12 is something that's easy to do but also something that's easy to get wrong so I'm gonna go through it in some simple steps to describe what you need to pay attention to so I got the car right here or the chassis it's already ready uh, the pivots mounted but as you can see it's loose I didn't tighten it up yet but I'm gonna start with the rear pod so first of all you need to make sure that the rear pod is completely flat like this aluminium piece should lie flat on the board without any signs of bending or anything like that I use Hiroseiko titanium screws for the bottom and these aluminium pieces are new so they're obviously straight out of the box but if you ran the car already then you need to make sure that they are straight as well if you had a crash for instance you can put them on the board and just check for uh, flatness very very important because they do bend sometimes if you have a hard crash so you need to mount them Push them against the aluminium uh, pod when you tighten the screws down to make sure that they're sitting flat. And do the same for the uh, left side. Once that's done, make sure you tighten them down properly, put on the board again, check that it's completely flat, shouldn't be moving or it shouldn't have any sign of uh, bending, and you need to keep checking for straightness through the building process of the rear pod. It's done. Then we have the carbon, I call it the X piece for the rear. Uh, which keeps the rear pod uh, straight and makes the rear axle spin freely through cornering. To mount this I use uh, aluminium screws from Hiroseiko. First of all I'm just gonna put all the screws in there. Not tightening them fully at this point, just putting in, putting them in. What you need to do when you got them all in there is you put it on a flat surface and while pushing it down you tighten the screws. Keep it pushed down and tighten the screws. Start with the bottom screws. And finally the top. This is to make sure that there's no bending when you tighten the screws down. So there it is, all set. Something which I will admit it's a bit of a weak point on the X12 is uh, the upper screws for this top plate. These two screws have a tendency to come loose even if you're not in a crash, if you're just driving after, after some time they can come loose so even though you keep tightening them down uh, it will add some security to use not the aluminium screws that I used for the, for the rear X piece but use the supplied kit steel screws and just add a tiny bit of medium strength tread lock tighten these down 
that way you avoid any surprises during your runs so just just a tip just to make your car more bulletproof next bit is putting it together with the chassis so I already mounted my pivot my pivot has been just put under I didn't tighten it up yet and if you can see that um, these screws right here uh, they're, they're tightened down but they're don't they're not over tightened so you need to make sure you don't over tighten these because you will end up binding the center pivot ball so I always say that it's better to have a little bit too much play than uh, binding so a little bit of play in all directions is fine obviously we'll try to minimize it but a little bit too much play is always better than binding so whenever you mount the rear pod keep that in mind so we gotta put this here what you need for the center pivot is a little bit shorter screw it has to be an M3 5 Tightening that up now, but I'm gonna use a 3mm from the top later to make sure it's completely tight. But for now, it will do. And then the side links. Again, I'm using Hero Seiko titanium screws. Tighten the side links down. The X12 has the option to use the side links in an angled position. So most of the time I run these in the inner hole, which means that the inside point is uh, more to the inside than the rear, and this will influence the steering of the car. It will give you more mid corner steering. Sometimes we also add shims under this screw right here, which will uh, further make this effect uh, work so actually makes the effect of the angle side link uh, even more evident in the handling and that is pretty useful for uh, black carpet in, in the US so once you got the side links mounted make sure it's moving freely make sure it's flat then comes the tricky bit. The tricky bit is to make sure you have free movement. Basically what I do is I shift this back and forth a little. I let it fall into its natural position. And I tighten these screws down. You need to keep doing this until you have free movement. So as you can see now, it's not free. So I need to look for the optimal position for this to have free movement. So this is why the pivot has slots in it for the nuts to slide so that you are able to find the correct position. There it is, the free movement. It's very important to keep searching for this until you find the perfect spot. Once you have it, just tighten everything down. And there it is. Uh, for the side links, again, it's important to have a little bit of play uh, in, in the opposition of having um, no play and no movement, which means binding most of the time. So it's very important to pay attention to these things. And once you do, you'll have a, a free rear pod with minimal play, and that will give you good performance on the track. You need to keep repeating these steps when you rebuild a car or when you've had a crash or anything like that. You can usually see from the tweak of the car 
when something's up with a rare pod, so you need to keep repeating these steps uh, on race day. Thank you.